Iandalism, fire, etc., including all the conflicts. And that happened because in, in the uh, in the Dono agreement to to build the stadium, there are specific clauses in there about <coughs> insurance. And what it does state is that the city will provide builders' risk insurance for the stadium. For those of you not familiar with risk insurance, that is a basic it's a property policy that covers uh, the building, the completed portions of the building while it's in the construction stages. Whether, and also material, uh, materials that may be held on site or off site that are going to go into the construction of the stadium. Builders risk policies usually expire in one year and they have to be closely monitored because construction projects go over the estimated uh, conclusion of the project like this one had. So insurance companies will do <coughs> endorsements to extend the coverage. The builder's risk policy does expire by definition when the certificate of occupancy is issued. So if the, the city takes ownership of the property, <coughs> the builder's risk is, is effectively uh, done because there's no more building to be done, except for punch lists, et cetera. That's, that's what it is. <clears throat> In this case, when the mayor fired Dona, uh, exercised rights on the contract to relieve Dona from the project, Dono, in turn, had to relieve Center Plan among Center Plan companies, Center Plan Construction, Center Plan Earth, all those companies. When he effectively he took the builder out of the project, he effectively stopped construction of the project, which I was informed terminated the builder's risk policy. Therefore, eliminating all property and contents coverage effective when Dono was taken off the job. There's no builder, there's no construction in progress, there's no uh, builder's risk insurance anymore. We, did, we didn't get a confirmation of the termination though, right? No, not from the carrier. Oh, I you. looked at our property policy, which is $500 million for our buildings in the city of Hartford, and, and all the room, it expired in 14, I didn't have a trial one, but it's the same, Writ underwritten by travelers. And in, in that policy, it does cover buildings under construction, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I looked at it and I said, okay, well, we, we've got the coverage here. I talked to the risk manager today, and uh, he, he was brought into this a few days after we terminated the contract. And he was told by travelers that that stadium is not covered. We are not covering that stadium in the property policy. So that takes that out of the mix. Travelers did not tell us formally or inform us of that. This is what I'm hearing. I didn't verify any of this. Okay. What about the performance bond? Performance bond, there's two performance bonds. There's one for payment of subsidiaries, and then there's a performance bond for completion of the contract of the of the project by the by the developer. Two yeah, different yeah, bonds. Yeah. Right. And is the completion based on um, the project as it was when terminated so that if it, let's say, it burned down, they would not be responsible for that. Under the performance bond? Yeah. To continue building the stadium after it burned yeah. down? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just asking. Uh, I'm just, okay, so this has been reported to... Uh, there, yeah, there are two different issues here. Right. Yes. The, the, the builder... The builder which is center plan donor. When they were fired, they no longer have an insurable interest in the property. Right. So having the property insured doesn't mean anything to them anymore because they're not involved in it, they're off. And the, the purpose of that provision was to protect the city and also the center plan right. for the building. So, but this has been reported, I mean, the, uh, the city staff understand this now. 
they know now. Now this is a couple weeks later since the, and we still have no carrier. They, they we have insurance. no insurance on that building for property and contacts. Um, they start looking at it maybe shortly I can after the foundation, though. Uh, <coughs> didn't they start looking at it and were aware of it a couple of days after the termination, based upon what you? That's heard? when they started looking into the insurance right. after the fact, after the decision was made. Okay. I'm not. I'm not really happy with. I'm not really happy with the way. Uh, it's gone by looking at it after it happened. A responsible tort council <coughs> chairman of the authority and mayor should have gone to the risk manager before pulling the plug and asking him or her what are the ramifications should we decide to fire these uh, center plan and they did they, apparently they didn't do it, is that correct? They, they did not do it. I specifically asked the risk manager if he was consulted on the, um, the exposures that the city would have as a result of the, the, manage, uh, the, uh, the mayor's uh, decision to pull the plug. He was never, never, and I quote him, you know, he was never consulted on that, on, on any of the insurance based on that decision. To me... He never brought into the process. To me... Uh, logically, uh, the responsibility rests at the top. You cannot pass the buck, you can't point fingers at underlings. If the mayor, the court council, and the stadium authority chair, and the COO, and the COO didn't do the responsible thing by asking the risk manager what would be the ramifications, particularly the building risk policy, then they were negligent, in my opinion. Absolutely, 100%. Negligent, and they are responsible, the four of them, for the stadium not being insured under building risk. Now, isn't it a fact, uh, Craig, that in order to get building risk, you have to go to a carrier and actually have a builder? Correct? Generally. Or you could be the builder. The city. Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't want to be, a build. be the builder. I wouldn't trust the city building <laughs> pickups <laughs> there. But. Tower Avenue. <clears throat> so but it's 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 a, it's, it's a it's a product that's been around forever. Right. And it's specifically for in process construction of whether it be a home, a commercial building, right. whatever it may be. But in order to be a builder for this particular project, ladies and gentlemen, it has to go through the process of going through the stadium with RFPs, with hearings, with paperwork being given and analyzed, it will, and then to the council ostensibly with the same thing and public hearings and testimony, it would take months to get a builder. Correct? Going forward? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you can okay. first, in my opinion, the builder's risk is, that's, it's out of the picture now. Right. I don't understand, number one, why the traveler's saying it's not included in our existing policy, which we have a big deductible for every property. But they've said that. But yeah, nobody's told me that they went to the travelers and say, okay, let's do an endorsement to the policy, adding the stadium like you would do anything. And that was going to be covered yeah. under a standard property and policy. That, and, that, -reported. and that was going to be. We are a self reporting. To the travelers on all our buildings, we buy and sell buildings all the yeah, time. Right. We get rid of them; they come off. Yeah, so every year we meet with them and we give them our inventory. This one is coming out of a builder's risk stuff. piece and right. going to go into the property piece right now because right. it's our property. Right. And the same people that did not go to the risk manager to get yeah. to get an analysis of what the <laughs> insurance ramifications right. would be also were negligent by not going to the travelers. To forewarn them and get a binder. That's. Could, Am I right? You could, you could, you could come to that conclusion. Thank you. To their benefit, though, they are working with our insurance agents and brokers on the property side, trying to resolve this matter. But isn't it a fact? It's beyond me. Whoa! Wait a minute. I don't know why nobody wants to write this. Isn't nobody it wants to underwrite this this Wait property? Yeah, but that's not going to get by me. Isn't it a fact that the premium? For this will be a lot more because of what they screwed up than it would be otherwise. 
in all likelihood? I don't know. I don't know. Well, isn't it reasonable to assume the premium will be kind of high? Going on the road, sir? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry. Objection. Uh, um, if the if this specific property is excluded from our overall property coverage for the city building, yeah, and that is that fact is determined, then if the the policy if the if the property is endorsed onto the policy. Then there'll be a, an associated premium at the discretion of the traveler. Right. And who no price? I, and I, and I who? don't, I'm sure we could go out right. to the Bermuda market, the international market. Without a hybrid. We can go to somewhere. And they will write that, the, the, they'll write that, that building. Mm -hmm. But you're going to pay the premium for it. So if there's an increase in premium, it was caused by the actions of the powers that be, and it'll be the taxpayers that'll be bearing the brunt of the negligence of the powers that be. No, the additional premium will be the result of letting our builders risk insurance lapse. Terminating them. But by firing them. What I don't understand by is the thing, them. and I didn't do an investigation or a lot of this. When the builder's risk stops right. based on a TCO or a, a full certificate of occupancy, right. and the city occupies the building through the yard goods, our tenants, right. therefore the builder's risk stops. Now what? It's got to go somewhere. Right. So it's got to go into our overall property coverage like any other building. But it's now, if and, and there's no language in there that talks about sporting arenas being exempt from coverage, nothing like that. So this is a deal that the risk manager should be, back, they, uh, they should have had a plan. I mean, this thing's going to get, I mean, it would have been, if they would have hit the end date mm -hmm. and they would have occupied it, now what? Mm -hmm. Now we've got a gap in property coverage? Mm -hmm. The thing is, there's no claims, there's been no loss. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, the bad right. news. That's the right. bad news and is then. the bad news is that a very reasonable management would have gone to their risk manager and said, "I'm thinking of terminating Dona. What are the ramifications?" Right. The, or the other side, the risk manager could have went to the administration. Hey, you got to be thinking about. Canceling, correct. Okay. Firing them. Right. Here's the insurance implications of your actions. Correct. Uh, it didn't happen either way. Um, so. I wonder if Solomon is aware of it. Mm -hmm. The team is aware. Oh, he is. I think so. Oh, he he. You know, Solomon has. He's got a very limited, if not, if none. He has no insurable interest in the property right now. No, I just figured he probably wouldn't be really happy to know about. It. Mm, no, I don't <laughs> think he <laughs> would. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, the comment is just amazing beyond belief. But, but, but the, 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 the questions, I, I guess, are two. One, no one has mentioned the role of IFG, International Facilities Group, and also whether the, 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 the city now will, will, right. will affect the, the charge for underwriting in the future. Let's say there is one depending on the amount of police coverage and protection of the property as it now exists, and whether they will insist that it be protected against damages and so I can answer both those questions for you. Yeah. Number one with IFG, I, I emailed Kevin today. He's our owner's rep, yes. which is IFG. Yeah. And I said, Kevin, based on the recent developments, what is your status? And he says, Craig, my status is the same as it was in May. So therefore, IFG has not been terminated as our owner's rep. So Kevin's in uh, Longboat, uh, Key Longboat, Florida, and it's home now. And he's just sitting, waiting to see what happens. So there's nothing going on with our owner's rep involved with this. Okay, and the, and the IFG question, side. The second question, certainly the taxpayers will be responsible for police coverage and, 
and circulation yeah. around it. Am I, I right? It's private security but now. The Monday cops aren't covering it anymore. Who's well, paying, no. Who's well, paying the private last security? Thursday I had uh, Deputy Chief Rendock in my office and uh, Clayton uh, Hargraves uh, from the S&T and, and uh, Sabina. And we were talking about police systems and we started talking about the, uh, the security of the stadium. And uh, Deputy Chief Rendock told me that, well, center plane Earth was playing private duty. So all those officers around uh, the stadium uh, during the termination uh, to secure the stadium was <coughs> being paid by center plane Earth mm -hmm. as private duty. That all ceased when they were fired, so they're not paying private duty anymore. Rendock told me that they have surveillance cameras all ready to go for the perimeter of the stadium. They're waiting for every source for power and frontier for something else to make these cameras operational. That those images will be live images of 24-hour surveillance going into the new crime center. I don't know if you had a tour of the crime center, but there's at least 30, 35 big screen monitors all over. And it's going to be live data on that stadium is going to be on that monitor. If something triggers a, a forcible entry, or I don't know exactly how the technology works, bells and lights will go off on the monitor and blah, 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 and we'll have an officer there within six to eight hours. <laughs> Bruce? Well, there's obviously no. a problem here. Uh, I do think that um, we ought to investigate what happened between the time just before the firing to now with respect to the insurance coverage and, and specific, the business risk. Who did what? Who didn't do what? What should have been done? Was any policies violated? And the likes. So I make a motion that we investigate the uh, <clears throat> insurance coverage issue and make it a priority since um, this has to do commissioners with a great deal of money and a stadium that's cost north of 90 million dollars right now. Yeah. So I make a, a motion that we investigate it <clears throat> as a priority. Cool. Yeah. I'm trying to get at what, what gets accomplished by that. The important thing is that they need to put insurance in place. Right? Well, here's, here's why I think we need to investigate it. This is not the first time that the city has been bereft of insurance, bereft of um, uh, ledgers of credit, bereft of monitoring. It seems to be an old refrain. And I think the more that we bring this to light by way of an investigation, maybe the behavior will change. Um, we certainly can't do business the same old way, and you know I, I really do think we need to investigate it, particularly with who did what and how and why, who did not do what, and who did not follow through with the policies. I think, and particularly because of the amount of money, so I make a motion that it, you know we investigate this. Craig's done a lot of work on it already. I definitely agree. We need to follow up and make sure that you know your very reasonable suggestion that it be insured is. Implemented, um, but I'm, uh, I don't know what an investigation means at this point. Because we could, we could. So we want to write a policy that says every time you fire a developer, you. Yeah. Do, I mean, we could request. We could request and suggest that there be an asset manager in a report, and then use the report and the request that there be an asset manager because we are getting this in other deals where they're not monitoring. Uh, and maybe go to the mayor with this, or the mayor and the COO and the corporate council, and use this as a stimulus to get the policy changed. Because we're seeing this, we saw this in Dillon, we saw this with the golf courses, we're going to see this more and more. This is like what happens when you have mass shootings and nothing's done to change mass shooting, mass shootings. It just continues. So my suggestion is let's try to get the policy changed. And the way to get the policy changed is to investigate it, render a report, request these meetings, um, and see if they'll agree.
to get somebody in that will handle the intra-departmental coordination of these deals so that there's no more screw-ups. So your, your focus would be on what could be done to avoid this situation occurring in the future. Yeah, because we had a lot of them in the past. Yes. No, but I know because they didn't build another stadium. No. No, but we are going to be doing complicated leases and sales that's going to require a lot of interdepartment work. It's not related to builder's risk collapsing wow. and how it happened. You can throw the blame on every one of them. And you only have one person in the organization that's anything about insurance. And he came out of Chubb and Simsbury as a professional lines, professional liability underwriter. So, I mean, we don't have that. And we've had this conversation. I don't think people are thinking about insurance. I think about insurance all the time. I've been in four years. I think about insurance and, and insurance risk. Well, but I don't think there's anybody in, in that state of mind. Well, maybe about that. maybe they will think about it if they. But read that's what we have the risk manager. That's well, maybe, his job. Maybe they'll read. Maybe if they read a report that lays out what happened and what went wrong, they'll start thinking about it. If we just note it for the record and just sit by. Uh, and hope that there's change, there won't be any. And now I understand we're not going to build any other stadiums. But I also understand that there's going to be other complicated transactions involving leases and buy and sells, in which there's going to be interdepartmental activity, in which there's going to be uh, letters of credit with the insurance premiums, and somebody in the city has got to be able to monitor this stuff effectively and efficiently. That job's been filled by the risk manager. An asset manager is not going to do this. That risk manager is in, is in charge of our, our the, the, the all the insurance except our medical for this city. Did the risk manager get a copy of the um, letter of credit for Donna? I don't understand. That has nothing to do with insurance. That's not his job. Well, that's why we need an asset manager. But they're too unrelated. I mean, they're, they're sort of related, but they're not to this issue. I mean, well, they I are. just don't want to make it look like we're piling on. We're saying we told you so, we said so. I mean, I don't know how you were getting the only The only issue that, that I see here is really what happens when a performance bond is called. Because that's what triggered it, basically. Well, what happens is you're, you know, you're putting the insurance company, the bonding company on notice that you may be filing a claim against you for preservation of their rights is what you're doing. Exactly. What you're doing, what you're doing like calling the bond. But at, some point, claim but at some point in that, in that process, you either fire the contractor or the insurer I don't know if they can do that. I don't know what the bond says. I don't know what the bond says either. The agreement between is the city and Dover. They fired Dover. They can't fire Center Plan. Right. Center Plan Earth and Center Plan Construction has no contract with the city. No, for that contract is with Dover. And if they got somebody new, they'd have to go now, through a whole process. They fired process. Dover. No, don't know in turn. I don't know what they did to the same plan. They pulled them off the job. They it's pulled them off the job. And it's spun down the return of the contracts with them. I, I have no idea what they, they did that. They withered away. But, but to replace Dono, I think you will agree, they will, they'd have to go through the process that the city has for selection. Well, no, done, I, think they, by, of, uh, I think they would sidestep that by saying, by, and, and using using the ordinance, this is an extreme matter, and blah blah blah. Oh, the emergency yeah, matter, yeah. Uh, the emergency yeah, statute. Do something like that. Yeah. Would that be assault? Would you be, assault, be, assault would you be bypassing they did citizen it. input too? They 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 did it on the onset. There was no big contract, and there was no referendum mm -hmm. on the deal. Well, I so. know, but there was no citizen input yeah. in the initial selection, so they. Selected a developer that had absolutely no experience in building a stadium. Yeah. And that's what that's what no citizen input yet. Let, let, let's get focused here. You've got a motion. Um, 
I would consider a motion that uh, asks for a report on just what the um, status of, of getting the insurance is. And I think in the course of that, we'd have some, some sense of who's doing what and who needs to do what. Uh, I, I had a conversation with Brisbane this morning, and it's, it's beyond me. Right. While that, how that that stadium could be sitting there, not insured today. Mm -hmm. Travers writes a binder immediately. It's bound. Mm -hmm. It's bound back to the termination of the of, of the uh, of the builder's risk. Boom! It's back to It's done. Done deal. Here's the premium. Pay it. I, I don't understand it. it unless it that easy, unless you, travelers you, sit you there and saying we don't underwrite stadiums. Well, what do you mean you don't underwrite stadiums? You're underwriting every building and says it in your contract. I mean, I don't understand why there's not a character on this. May I, may I ask something that hasn't been clarified? At least, at least as far as I can tell. When and and the Corporation Council and our risk manager yeah. and, and, we, and we, our agents are sitting there exposing the city yeah. to a $60 million. Okay, program. here, the, uh, on that question. You, we've been using a little, almost, let's say carelessly or interchangeable. Is it the city of Hartford and the mayor, or is it the quasi-governmental HSA, Hartford Stadium Authority, that has the responsibility and uh, in terms of in terms of the bonding and the insurance and so on, because they're not quite the same, uh, as I understand that. But at the end of the like, day, they're, they're, they're little, and yeah. the, the HSA ha has a different bonding arrangement, and I don't know personally to this day, others may know better, whether, whether the HSA floated its bonds on the full faith and credit of the oh. city of Hartford. And, and whether that affects the insurance status, and I'm told. Well, that. if something went wrong, we had a tornado rip through the north end tonight, destroys the stadium. Who do we go after? We go after travelers. Go after the tornado. We go after the authority. Now we go after the professional liability insurance on the authority. I assume we have prof they have professional liability insurance. It's the being authority, the authority. That flows the bonds, right? But the authority is the city. At the end of the day, it's our asset. And there's and it's identification exposed. language. It doesn't matter if it's the authority or if it's the um, mayor's office. We have the city of Hartford as a an asset that is right. exposed to to perils. So, Mr. 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 Chairman, um, yes, if I may make a friendly amendment, I am interested in going forward with it with respect to the coverage. But I also think it's important to look at the past with respect to this, because we've had insurance lapses before. So I'd like to see sort of an encompassing encompassing investigation. He's done a lot of work already um, to encompass both. Uh, so if you have no objection, I think you should look at both. What happened in the past, who did what, who didn't do what, and where do we go in the future, and who's doing what to get us to a point of being insured having the uh, builder's risk or a binder in place going forward. We all need it tomorrow. Pardon me? We can have insurance in place tomorrow for all we know. Somebody can run. Well, that'd be good. I hope they I do. I hope so. I hope they do. I'm not against having insurance. I'm just against... Don't be in your report. <laughs> I'm against... How fast do I write? <laughs> <laughs> you agree? I don't think it's asking too much. We got to know. You got to build up the past to change the future. This should not go on. Well, I think the most important thing is get the insurance in place and make sure that the people who are responsible for doing that are aware of the situation. That's, but that's, that's the very same people that got us in this mess. Yeah, Bruce, I understand that, but also people have a lot of other things that they are considering when they made that decision, and they, they probably did not consider this. Right. And so it was, it was probably a clear oversight, but they didn't. Um, so that's, um, that's an oversight. The question, in my mind, the most immediate question is, are they correcting it? Do they recognize that, that, uh, that that's a problem, and are they correcting it? I hope they are. And what Furtick told me, the responder told me today, is that they were on this around two to three days after the formal firing was done. 
which is so two to on. three days late. Yeah, so you were talking a week and a half. I mean, it, it, it's it's right, exactly. my understanding was a week and a half ago that as the, term, of, it, the, the termination occurred. But as of today, and yeah, so two days after super, that, mm -hmm. they they became aware of it and started taking action. So it's almost like a week into it now that they're trying to resolve it or something like that. So, so today we're sitting there and management believes that we have a property worth X millions that's not insured based on conversations with the travelers and with the uh, agent on the, on the building trust. Nothing's in writing, nothing's, there's, uh, so well, where's the formal notice of cancellation or from the builder's risk side? Right. We don't have anything on that. Did we receive so, it? The city received it? They should have. In Bellington, they asked for it. I don't know if they got I have no idea. I didn't Maybe they didn't it. ask for it. But we have court counsel, we have our risk manager, and then we have our insurance agent broker all involved in this transaction right now. So I don't know what we could do to stimulate it. I don't know. Well, here's my answer. Here's my answer to that. We want to, I think we all agree we don't want this to happen again. And well, we don't want Dona to happen again. We don't want a lot to happen. <laughs> keep on happening. Oh. But um, somebody got to be held accountable. Because well, if nobody's held accountable, then we'll just do it again. It's like, it's not like, it's, it's like I said with mass shootings. If you don't have the legislation to require uh, check, handgun checks and registration, then you just it continues, and that's what this will be. I agree. We, we see that it was definitely probably an oversight. Yeah. The gravity of the matter is number one. We don't have a we don't have a loss. We have the risk, but we don't have a loss. If we had a loss, that would be a whole different ball game. Mm -hmm. But we don't have the loss now. I mean, we're playing Russia roulette. I mean, but the odds are in our favor that a tornado or a hurricane or a flood yeah. could take out the state. I don't think that's going to happen. No, we if we had a major we, hurricane, with hundred mile we pay gale force winds. Mm -hmm. Those. Those roofs are built to withstand that, and the, and the wind is actually going to blow right through the stadium. Not only that, but what, what are the well, coverage? <coughs> what are the coverages? So and that's not going to happen. Hard. What is what is our deductible too? What are these on these things? Five hundred thousand. But so by firing Dona, we do have a loss. <coughs> we do have a loss. The loss is the loss is this. <coughs> the loss is the increased maintenance that the city must provide the stadium. To guard against spoilation, right? It's not a loss. That's a consequence of the decision. That's yeah, that's a loss yeah. because it's we wouldn't have to pay it otherwise. It's a that's a loss. The increased probable premium for a binder or possible insurance for a situation in which a stadium is partially completed and doesn't have a PCO that it otherwise would have, so we city would be paying a premium. The other loss will be the litigation of lawsuits when the city goes out to private counsel that it otherwise wouldn't have to do if there was some settlement agreement to let, and I'm not advocating center plan, mind you, but to let them finish, finish the job. And those are all losses that the citizens will have to pay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Those are all consequences of, of, the, decision. of the decision. That's yeah. right. There's a lot of consequences. A decision that wasn't thoroughly and adequately vetted. Well, there is no loss at this point. Insurable loss. Well, that's because there's yes. only been the firing for 10 days, days. Right. seven so, days. So, so, so we get back to, do we have more to discuss? Uh, <laughs> I mean, to me, the priority is get the thing insured. That's that's the priority. Would, would, would it apply to say that for the time being, or maybe continuing, this, the city is self-insured for the stadium as it is for medical claims? Is does that fit? A self-insured. Well, but that's exactly what it is. Well, we do not. We are one hundred percent self-insured. <laughs> Larry, we have not made. We <coughs> the city has not taken that position in all the buildings that we own. That's what I'm. Mean. We've taken the position to self-insure five hundred thousand right. dollars right. per occurrence that's per right. building. So we'll the take the first five hundred. First five hundred thousand. Well, <coughs> and I don't know offhand if there's an aggregate in there. 
there's a five million or ten million dollar aggregate in the policy. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Multiple policies. Do you, do you, do you want them to do a report or not? Yeah. The motion on the table. Right. Is there a second? If you don't want him to do a report, that's fine. Nothing. Yeah. If, uh, if I'm not in favor of the report, if, uh, yeah, I've heard that uh, that uh, the people who are responsible for that they understand the problem and they are pursuing it. <clears throat> you don't want to report that. Okay, so there's no seconds and there'll be no reports. Fine. There's no action taken on the Thank you, Bruce, for fighting for us. You're welcome. Okay. Um, so we're all done with 12? Yeah. Okay. So 13. Oh. As Kyle said, should we be following up and making sure? Well, that's what we, yes. we agreed to do. Yeah. Okay. 